Now we're going to develop two more functions that operate on lists of numbers, and then abstract from them as well. Here's the signature and purpose for remove two, which removes all the twos from a list. Let's finish writing this function. First, here are the examples. Wherever there's a two in the list, we remove it. Otherwise, we keep the list the same. Now let's start with the template. Here's the template for processing a list of numbers. Now we need to figure out what to do in each case. If the list of numbers is empty, then the list of numbers without twos is also going to be empty. So we'll fill that in. Now, what should we do with the first of the list? Well, there's two possibilities. If the first of the list is a two, we don't want to include it. Otherwise, we do want to include it. And what should the remainder of the list be? Well, remove two of rest of LON removes all the twos from the rest of the list. It's important to trust the signature and purpose statement there and not try to second guess what remove two is going to do. Since there's two possibilities here, we're going to need another conditional. If the first of LON is two, we don't want to include the first in the remainder of the list. We're going to just remove the, all the twos from the rest, and that will be our answer. Otherwise, we do want to include the first of the list, and we also want to remove two from all the rest of the list. That means we have these two pieces of data, which we need to put together. First of LON is a number, remove two of rest of LON is a list of numbers, and we need to put them together. That's something we do with comms. Now when we run our program, all our tests will pass. Now let's develop another function that removes. Now let's develop another function that removes all the sevens from a list of numbers. Here's the signature, purpose, and header. Now let's write some examples. Here are three examples for remove seven. Now let's write our function. It's going to end up very similar to remove two. Here's the body of our function. It does exactly the same things that remove two does. When we run our program, all our tests will pass. Now let's abstract these two programs. First, let's put them side by side. Here we have the two programs side by side. Now let's consider the differences between them. There's only one, the number two versus the number seven. We're going to turn that into an input. I'll edit the remove two function, making that into the abstracted version. We'll add a new input called n, replacing two. Now we have to make sure that in our recursive call, we use n as the second argument. We also need to change our signature, purpose, and name of the function. Now we've finished creating our abstraction. Let's use remove n to redefine remove seven. We're going to use remove n as the body of our function. Remove n takes two inputs, first of which is a list of number. Second input, is the input we added when we created the remove n abstraction. What we circled in remove seven was the number seven. So that means it's the second input we're going to add. Now let's redefine remove two. Here's the beginning of remove two. We're going to again use remove seven, remove n. We need to pass it a list of numbers and a number. Here, that number will be two. And now we're done with remove two. We've now successfully redefined both the functions that we started with using our abstraction. When we run our program, all our tests will pass. Now we're done with our abstraction, and we can use it in whatever ways we want.